Wise of P offers players plenty of different options when it comes to which weapon they want to use during their time with the game. Whether you prefer more generic daggers and swords or massive anime-style tridents, you're bound to find a weapon that you like, hidden somewhere in the alleyways of the dark city of Krot. If you're struggling with Lies of P's high difficulty level, don't worry, you're definitely not alone, but you might be able to make things a little bit easier for yourself by dropping your current weapon and picking up something a little bit more powerful. Here are the top 10 best weapons in Lies of P. Take note that this list doesn't account for the massive number of possible weapon combinations that you can create. Instead, it focuses on the base stats of the default weapons and will save the best combinations for another list. If you don't see your favorite weapon, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Number 10, Electric Coil Stick. The Electric Coil Stick is a fantastic early game weapon that can act as a good replacement for your starting sword, but you can take all the way to the end of the game if you invest into it. The stick doesn't have the best range, but what it lacks in reach, it more than makes up for in speed. The Electric Coil Stick is also a relatively light weapon that gets a B scaling in advance and a C scaling in motivity, making it suitable for a wide variety of builds. The stick's biggest selling point, however, is its ability to deal massive electric blitz damage. The Electric Coil Stick has a very helpful fable art that boosts your electric damage, which can overload enemies and deal constant passive electric blitz damage. It's not as fancy as other fable arts, but it's certainly reliable, especially when paired with the Fulminous Legion arm. The secondary fable art is a classic jump attack. Again, nothing special, but that's to be expected from an early game weapon. You can buy the electric coil stick from the Wandering Merchant found inside the house on Elysian Boulevard for only 1200 ergo. Number 9. Big Pipe Wrench. The Big Pipe Wrench is a ridiculously oversized blunt weapon that weighs a ton and takes ages to swing. However, the weapon also hits like a truck and can make short work of enemies provided you time your swings properly. The Big Pipe Wrench has one of the highest base attack stats in the game and gets a very respectable B scaling in motivity, making it ideal for strength based builds in Lies of P. The Big Pipe Wrench's fable arts are pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a weapon like this. You've got a devastating smash attack with a long wind up along with a quicker slash attack that deals a little bit less damage. The big pipe wrench can be found fairly early on in the game in the Vanini works inside a chest. Number 8. Coil Mjolnir Coil Mjolnir is a beefy blunt weapon inspired by Thor's hammer. Just like the Thunder God's signature weapon, the hammer surges with electricity, which deals bonus damage and staggers mechanical foes just like the electric coil stick. Coil Mjolnir isn't the fastest weapon, but it does have plenty of attack power and a b-scaling emotivity, so you'll definitely want to consider it if you're playing a strength build. Coil Mjolnir has a fantastic fable art that deals electrical damage in a radius around you while also imbuing your weapon with electricity. The secondary fable art is far less impressive as it's essentially just a basic block. The hammer can be found in Krot Central Station during your second visit to the area in the second half of the game. Number 7. Carcass Crystal Axe The Carcass Crystal Axe is a pretty unique blunt weapon that inflicts acid damage. While most of the best weapons in Lies of P are geared towards helping you take down mechanical enemies, this one is better at dealing with human opponents. The Carcass Crystal Axe is a fairly well-rounded weapon that gets a B scaling in advance and a C scaling in motivity. It's a bit heavy for a hybrid weapon, but it makes up for that with its damage output and status effect. The Carcass Crystal Axe's fable arts aren't anything to write home about, but they get the job done. The primary one is an explosion that deals acid damage in a radius, while the secondary one temporarily decreases stamina consumption. It's a weapon that pairs well with the Pandemonium Legion arm for poison builds. You can buy the Carcass Crystal Axe from Test Subject 826 for 3700 ergo. You can find Test Subject 826 on Rosa Isabel Street after you defeat Laxacia the Complete. Number 6. Exploding Pickaxe The Exploding Pickaxe is a large blunt weapon whose name tells you just about everything you need to know about it. In addition to hitting enemies with explosive force, the weapon also inflicts fire damage thanks to its fable arts. Like most of the best strength-based weapons, the Exploding Pickaxe gets a solid B scaling in motivity and has a high attack rating, but suffers in the speed and weight departments. The Exploding Pickaxe's primary fable art, Flame Strike, is where the weapon gets its name from. Flame Strike is a powerful jump attack that allows the player to deal massive AoE fire damage to surrounding enemies. The weapon becomes temporarily imbued with fire following the attack, allowing for equally devastating follow-ups that are especially powerful against carcass enemies. The secondary fable art is just a buff that temporarily decreases stamina consumption. You can find the Exploding Pickaxe inside a safe in the Estella Opera House. Number 5. Holy Sword of the Ark the Holy Sword of the Ark is a boss weapon that looks like a pretty typical greatsword. However, it has a lot more going on for it than just that. Among other things, it can change its length and has a hidden 5-hit combo moveset. In addition, the Holy Sword of the Ark deals a ton of damage and gets a B scaling in motivity, along with a C scaling in technique. 
The only thing dragging this weapon down is its high weight. The Holy Sword of the Ark comes with a unique weapon art known as Altar that lengthens the weapon while reducing its stamina consumption. Using the primary fable art without first altering the weapon results in a generic smash attack. However, this changes to a fancy five hit combo slash when used while the weapon is transformed. You can acquire the Holy Sword of the Ark by defeating King's Flame Fuoco and trading its rare ergo to Aladoro in exchange for the blade. Number four, Trident of the Covenant. The Trident of the Covenant is a boss weapon that comes with good range, above average damage, and increased durability. Its damage stat doesn't look particularly impressive compared to some of the other weapons on this list. However, the Trident of the Covenant has a special passive that increases its critical strike rating. In other words, the Trident of the Covenant actually does more damage than other weapons, not less, provided that the RNG gods are on your side, of course. The Trident of the Covenant gets a B scaling in technique and a C scaling in motivity. The Trident's primary fable art, Link Rush Stab, can be a bit tricky to pull off at first, but you'll be able to deal a massive amount of damage with it once you manage to master it. The secondary fable art is a counter that requires you to first time a perfect parry before reposting with an attack of your own. Again, it's not the easiest attack to master, but this weapon is meant for dexterity based builds and demands a lot of finesse. The Trident of the Covenant can be acquired by defeating fallen Archbishop Andreas and trading its rare air go to Aladoro in exchange for the weapon. Number 3. Noblesse Oblige the Noblesse Oblige may look like an ordinary club, but this is secretly one of the best weapons in Lies of P. Granted, it's also one of the final weapons you can get your hands on, but it's great for New Game Plus runs and shouldn't be overlooked. It gets an A scaling in motivity and can be used both offensively and defensively. The Noblesse Oblige's primary fable art is a straightforward smash attack that obliterates anything caught in its path. It's certainly not subtle, but it's very effective. Meanwhile, the secondary fable art is a buff that makes you able to tank enemy attacks for a short time. You can acquire the Noblesse Less obliged by defeating Simon Manas, Awakened God, and trading its rare Ergo to Aladoro or Hugo in exchange for the weapon. Number 2. Puppet Ripper Despite being classified as a sword, the Puppet Ripper looks more like a scythe than anything else. That said, it's not just a fantastic looking weapon, but it's also a very powerful one. The Puppet Ripper has excellent range, good damage, and gets a B scaling in technique along with a C scaling in motivity. If you're going for a dexterity build, this is one of the best choices. The Puppet Ripper's Storm Spinning Slash Fable art is one of the best weapon arts in the game. When timed properly, it can be used to make short work of multiple opponents at once by swinging the weapon in a circle around you. The other Fable art, Quick Upward Slash, is just as effective, however, it's aimed at single targets. You can acquire the Puppet Ripper by defeating the King of Puppets and trading its rare Ergo to Alidoro in exchange for the Scythe. Number 1. Two Dragon Sword The Two Dragon Sword is a beautiful katana that lets you cosplay as a puppet samurai minus the Kabuto helmet. As you might expect from a weapon like this, the Two Dragon Sword is very fast, light, has good reach, and allows the player to remain highly mobile while delivering punishing blows. The blade's damage is only average, but keep in mind that the DPS will be high because it's such a fast weapon. The Two Dragon Sword gets an A scaling in technique, making it the go-to weapon for dexterity builds. Unsurprisingly, the Two Dragon Sword's primary fable art relies on mobility. When used, the player dashes forward and quickly unleashes a couple of powerful attacks. The other fable art is even more impressive as it allows you to blow a wind of swords in a cone in front of you that damages everything in a wide radius. The Two Dragon Sword can be acquired by defeating the Puppet Devouring Green Monster and trading its rare Ergo to Aladoro in exchange for the weapon. And that's our list of the best weapons in Lies of P. Because there are so many different weapons in the game that can work with so many different builds, we're bound to have overlooked something. If we didn't mention your favorite, make sure to let me know in the comments down below, and while you're down there, remember to like this video, subscribe to Dual Shockers, and click the bell icon to be notified whenever we post more Lies of P content.